So, Doctor, you're a medical doctor, is that correct? Right. I, I am a medical doctor. I graduated from West Point, spent 20, 26 years in the Army. I retired in 1996. Uh -huh. I've been doing disease management, and I am a uh, medical director for a number of different programs. I've been doing uh, Lixanol uh, CBD for the last five years, and I circulate around the country and internationally doing lectures and presentations, and I review the science that is uh, current on cannabidiol for a broad range uh -huh. of different conditions. The Elixinol is a very high quality. You're getting an 85% likelihood of positive patient response by using this product in the first dosing. I'm giving right. you my clinical impression from having treated a large number of patients over time. Uh -huh. So with this, doctor, what particular um, areas are you trying to address, you know, stating that you're getting actually 85% of the response in well, what I, uh, particular area? So anxiety, pain, uh, depression, uh, PTSD, mm -hmm. uh, dementia. Mm -hmm. So with that, I mean, so far, I mean, what have you established somehow like a dosing uh, for specific, you know, you know, patient uh, uh, space, for instance? Let's say well, I have pain. I have guidelines for you. So because oh, you have guidelines for that. Well, it's it's really quite simple, and you don't. I know you're thinking in, uh, as a pharmacist in how you mm -hmm. use medications, but I want you to really throw that out the window because this compound doesn't behave like a pharmaceutical drug in that requiring levels. This is a signaling molecule that produces a cascade of other benefits um, and does not necessarily require a drug level in order to provide those benefits. So that means that, and there's a high degree of variability in people's response. It's not a matter of the absorption and how much they have within their bodies as much it is, as it is their sensitivity and where they're deficient perhaps in the endocannabinoid system that they are, are functioning with. We know that there's quite a bit of endocannabinoid dysfunction for many of the diseases that we encounter, including pain, uh, migraine, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, um, and PTSD. It's well documented, but almost all the diseases have that. So my recommendation is to use to have patients start with the serving size that's on the bottle and for them to adjust the dose after that first uh, experience with it. If they don't feel that they are getting a response for it or any benefits, I recommend they actually double the dose. And you could just tell them they, they could titrate the dose. Well, you'll ask how quickly. Well, when I'm doing this, I do it right while patient's right in front of me or as I'm talking to them on the phone, and I'll ask them to take another serving uh, right then and there. And I expect to see response in two minutes. So are you saying that, you know, I mean, a patient with, uh, you know, let's say a patient without experience and first time to take a CB, you know, a hemp, hemp oil, how much would you recommend right away, let's say, if they're having some some pain or anxiety? I mean, and I'm sure it's, it's different. Do they have to take, like, uh, 10 milligrams. The serving um, size that's on the bottle. Right. So if you're taking a bottle that's 300 milligrams, are you saying that give one? The bottle has proper? a serving size on it, right? Right. Uh -huh. So ask them to take a single serving. Okay. Gotcha. And the reason I'm telling you that, because they, they come in various different serving sizes. And if you're dealing with the liposomal form, then that has an improved bioavailability. A serving size for that is 5 milligrams. A serving size of one of the tinctures is typically 15 milligrams. The serving size of a capsule is 15 milligrams. So you see there's a certain variability that comes along with that. And then, otherwise, you're trying to, you're going to try to treat this like a pharmaceutical. Oh, I, I want you to take 7.5 milligrams. Well, how are you going to do that? I mean, just tell them to take, this is really easy. No toxicity, no significant adverse effects. Tell them to take a serving size and then titrate from there. There's about one in 50 people that's, that that can be too much for. And, it, and so then you use a half a dose 
or you use a very, very small amount. For instance, in if you're using um, the, the liposomes, if five pumps are too much for them, then start with one pump. Or if and and you, the way that you know that is number one, are they extremely sensitive to other things? And if you get that history, yeah, I'm really sensitive to medications or supplements. So then you start off with a low dose. And usually I start off for those people and anyone who's under the age of seven or over the age of 70, 70 or older. So from seven to 70, they use a standard serving and they use that twice a day. So you, uh, again, for below seven years old, you said? Yeah, so seven and years and seven. seven years and younger, start with half a dose. Uh, okay. For so a set, age a dose, seventy, then. for age seventy or above, it's half a dose. Half of the serving size. Half because of now the you're serving size. About medical, yes. Right, because when you mention dose, that has a you know a milligram component. Right. So Correct. I I agree. Then I should have said serving size. So half of a serving size. You're right. Uh huh. So um, you mentioned that it's actually you know safe. If a person is actually on um, narrow therapeutic index medication, is that a concern or no? No. And the reason why is because the only interference, um, and you're familiar with the CYP450 system, that right. does not engage until CBD gets to doses on the order of about 200 milligram or over five milligrams per kilogram. And it's a relative inhibition. It's not an absolute inhibition. And that goes so the, along well, with blood thingers, including warfarin. Um, there, now, Doc, you mentioned already, you know, it, it actually, you know, it, it, there, is an over, there is a reaction if it's actually 250 milligrams, you said? Yes. So now it's not the serving size, right? So let's say, a patient, um, what do you so call So how it? many how many in capsules study, is that? In this Let's say they're taking taking capsules. Every capsule is fifteen milligrams. So when what you're then you're talking about is uh, about uh, uh, thirteen capsules per day. Right. So yeah, you're uh -huh. you're likely you may get some interference at that level. But how many patients gotcha. are going to be taking thirteen capsules at a time? Well, because you know, I mean, uh, their base, the uh, the PGLX stock. I mean, that one, the dosing, the dosing strength. I mean, the dosing that they're giving that one, for instance, that's basically five milligrams per kilogram body weight. So basically, that's 250 milligrams twice a day. Correct. For what for what condition? Uh, for um, seizure. Yeah, now seizure, you start to get into the area where you do get some interaction. So then you have to right. you have to look out. But CBD doesn't have any significant adverse effects on its own. It's the other medications that may be potentiated. You're right. You're right. Uh -huh. So seizure disorders you know, and using high doses, only when you're really using high doses. Most, in my experience, most patients with seizures respond to one milligram per kilogram, maybe two milligrams per kilogram. One milligram, okay, got you. Hmm, that's interesting. So now, if it's one milligram per, per kilogram, so now for, for children who are seven years old below, that's actually beyond the one that you mentioned a while ago, right? That, you know, half the serving size. So let's let's say um, we've got um, a seven-year, a six-year-old. Um, uh -huh. uh, so what are they going to weigh? About um, thirty-five pounds, forty pounds? Yes, sir. So they're they're twenty kilos, and and so you're using liposomes, and you're starting off with three milligrams twice a day. Okay, that's not even uh -huh. close. And I, and then you're talking about oh, so maybe, you're using liposomes. Uh -huh. And then if you're so using the, a tincture, so then that's mm -hmm. you're going to have um, one full milliliter is going to be 15 milligrams. So you've got one and a third before you get to the point where you're getting one milligram per kilogram. You know, I, I really don't want you to get too tied to the one milligram per kilogram. I, 
I give give that to you as a reference. And reference. Okay, got you. To to give an idea of where you're at with it. Mm -hmm. The worst side effect that you get with CBD is you get tired. People get fatigued. Yeah. Oh, got you. At what, I mean, that you haven't, um, that's for high doses, right? Well, it, it depends on the sensitivity of the individual. And it typically, it is at high doses. And so the, mm -hmm. prin the principle is high doses are sedative and lower doses mm -hmm. are act activating. Okay. Question for have you experienced patients with ADD or ADHD? Yes. I mean, uh -huh. what what do I mean, how do you give this? Liposomes for for, for children. 5 uh -huh. 5 pumps, 5 milligrams twice a day or PRN. A CBD is excellent for sleep, but you have to understand a few things. At low doses, CBD is activating, and at high doses then it's it's sedative. A CBD doesn't knock you out and put you to sleep. It's actually a wakeful formula in many cases. However, the quality and the depth of sleep that people have is significantly improved. Putting people into stage four sleep, usually that's about 10% of our sleep. When you're using CBD, it can go as high as 70% of sleep. Now, one of the factors, um, so you don't, but on the, in contrast to using sleeping medications, don't take CBD right before sleep because it can be activating at that time. Take it at least two hours before sleep. There are exceptions to that. Once people find out how they respond, they can take it if they wake up during the night or they can take it right before they go to sleep, but they should have experience uh, with doing that. The other factor is that when people go into deep sleep, they don't remember deep sleep. And so patients may tell you, that I, I used CBD and I didn't sleep at all. You can't <laughs> tell from that. You have to evaluate. I ask them to run a sleep application from their telephone, from their smartphone, and they'll put it beside their bed. What if and they're not that fancy? Say again? Like, what if they don't have a smartphone? Uh, then you can't fully evaluate it. You And you the okay. question that you ask is, um, how do you feel this morning? You didn't sleep last night. How did you feel this morning? And they typically will say, well, I feel fine. Well, then you did they really not sleep last night if they feel fine? that It doesn't make any sense for them to do that. And yet that that is often what happens with it. Now, people are watching the clock, but people don't remember when they go to sleep when they're using CBD because deep sleep has no memory as a part of that. So have them use it either a standard dose, which is twice a day and at least two hours before sleep, and if they're possible, if they have concerns, then have them measure their sleep with a sleep application um, monitor. Okay. That's Dr. Blair. Any any anything else that you wanted to ask? You know, I mean, that's specific for sleep. You know, I, I'm sure we. Um. So you mentioned that low doses are activating and high doses are sedating. So then, if 10 milligrams is working for our patients who need help with sleep and that's working for them, but we have one that comes in that it's not working for them at 10 or 20 milligrams, we advise them to just continue, just keep it going up? Yes. So okay. typically, right. if, if I come into a patient then, and I use a immediate response, and I'm looking at patients who uh, come to me and say, you know, I, I've got uh, a pain or I've got anxiety, I have them take a dose in front of me and I time it, and at two minutes, I say, how do you feel? And at that point, they're typically giving me their symptoms as well. I'm I'm feeling relaxed and calm and clear, and my vision is improved, and I'm feeling relaxed. And then they're chuckling. They're kind of laughing and smiling. They've got spontaneous movements of the face. Their eyes are open wider. They're, they have a 20% increase in their range of motion, um, and they're uh, buoyant in their mood. So all of those things occur at about two minutes. If you don't get some of that, if you don't get those kinds of responses from people after a standard serving, then I have them double the dose right in front of me and I reassess them uh, in two minutes. If you take it right before sleep, if it activates you, you're awake and you're alert you're, and your mind is processing and you're thinking about things. And so people can get lost in that and they'll be thinking about their problems or their issues or addressing uh, other things. You know, one of the other effects of CBD is for 
a, a compulsiveness to get things organized, to take care of tasks, and their their brain is now working. You, people get lost into that, and then that is a distractor for sleep. So before I go to bed, let's say before 9.30, let's say five minutes, or before actually I lay down in bed, I take the CBD and sleep. And then for some reason, I don't even remember like getting sleep. I just like pass out and sleep. So yes. Like, um, so that's just as I said. You you go into a deep sleep. Now for you, you don't have to wait a long time. And but I'm I'm cautioning you on new patients, new to CBD. And once they find uh, out at how they respond, like you found out, you know the pattern to mm -hmm. take. But in your first doses, don't take it right before sleep and expect it to work like a sleeping pill and knock you out. Okay, that's what, and I noticed like, because every time like I take a night time, it knocks me out and then go to sleep, and then I don't even even remember my dream. I don't like I, I feel like I'm so relaxed at night time, and then I wake up like even though I slept like let's say five to six hours, and I feel like I sleep for eight hours. Merit exactly exactly what I'm telling you that you go into a deep sleep, uh, that you compress the the um, the rejuvenating sleep into a small segment and you don't need as much sleep in that process. You may sleep a full time or you may sleep less than that, but you'll find that you are refreshed for the entire day and fully functional. In deep sleep, you don't dream. So that's why. And you don't remember that you were sleeping. And it's such a surprise to wake up uh, six, four, six, or eight hours later and say, oh my God, I slept through the whole night and I, I don't remember anything. So. Example, perfect example, Mary. Yeah, that's right. Well, well thanks for the information. Um, I think uh, that's it for now, uh, Dr. Blair. Okay, well, um, let me give you some a couple other guidelines. Number one is for pain. Now, pain can sometimes sure. require high doses, so you may have to keep pushing the, the dose up. Can you do like, you know, uh, increase the dosing every hour? You can, yeah. Here's, to the point that you, here's the limit. You would I don't find okay, a benefit. Ahead. I don't find a benefit for pain over 200 milligrams. And so you get to the 200 milligram point. You're not getting any benefit from it. Uh, and I, I give up at that point. And I don't have them continue CBD. It's expensive, and I don't think that they are going to benefit from using mm, that form. Okay, that's a good point. One more milligram. thing. One more thing that. Uh -huh. Uh, even though they may require high doses initially during the first month, typically there is a a inverse tolerance. They will actually will be able to decrease the dose over time. And so that somebody starts off at 120 milligrams for a month, they may find that they'll be able to reduce the doses to 60 milligrams or even down to 30 milligrams at a later time after a month. Huh. Gotcha. That's a good point. Okay. What else, sir? What else, what else <laughs> do you have? I give us some more of your tips, sir. <laughs> Anxiety, depression, um, bipolar. It's actually quite magnificent for bipolar disease because it stops that quick shift. The big problem with bipolar is that they can rapidly go from depression uh, to manic phase. CBD actually stops that particular process. And so they don't shift over. They'll be they'll be able to stay and stabilize into a particular region. That's what that's one of the magics for bipolar. Now, um, with uh, schizophrenics are quite complicated, and uh, they need to be managed, and they're difficult to manage. So I, it's not just hair take this this solves your problems. It can be very very complicated. So I'm not in I'm not enthusiastic without having a very close scrutiny of those patients. Um, but all so the other behavioral that. disorders will benefit from using CPD. Autism, great response. Thank you. That belongs to you, ma'am. With autism, do you have a specific uh, serving size that you... No. So it really depends also on the, you know, they start low and slow. Is that correct? Yeah. The problem, well, you Dr. Run into the, you, you sometimes run into the problem where low doses are, are activating and higher doses then are sedating. So sometimes it's uh, you may have to be aggressive to get them to the more sedating and calming effects um, in autism. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Now it's a good point to start with. 
Well, Dr. Blair, I hope we can I can um, you. you know just email and call you if ever I have some more interesting questions or in the sure. future. Sure. Hey, I've got another idea for you. And one of the things that I do, a lot of times patients are traveling. One of the best ways to travel with CBD is with capsules. And I actually have people oftentimes, I like the sublingual dosing effect because it, it's immediate, uh, the two-minute effect. Right. So you can, if you bite the capsule or let it dissolve in your mouth, it doesn't taste good, but you get the immediate effects. Hold it in the mouth for a minute, let it dissolve, and then swish it around. And then you get the immediate but, effects. So if you're traveling, well, tra so you're traveling on an airplane, it's a hassle to take liquids. You can take capsules. And you can pop right. a capsule if you're feeling aches, pains, or you're having jet lag. It will mm -hmm. take care of your jet lag and resolve your jet lag. Best thing in the world for traveling. Huh. That's cool. For jet lags. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what uh, the 15 milligrams, sir? You know, 15 milligrams or is, is usually sufficient and takes care of um, their general needs. Some people require a little bit more, no no worries. And anybody who has um, anxiety, let's say they have panic attacks, let's say um, getting on an aircraft or going to the dentist. What a magnificent approach to the dentist, using CBD before a dental procedure for anxiety and also to enhance the analgesia uh, so that they're going not going to have uh, as much pain or inflammation post-procedure. Pre and post procedure. Yep. Huh. Um, is this also applicable for surgery? Other surgery? Yeah, it it could be. Now, um, the you know they won't know they won't want you to take anything orally, but I would just exactly. Huh? Frankly, if you let's say that you took it sublingually and you held it in your mouth for um, a minute, or or let's say uh, five minutes. Okay, you're going to, and then if you want to spit that out, that's fine. Uh-huh. Got you. Okay. Well, topical use Thanks, can Dr. sometimes be as effective as oral use, too. Really? Yes. But they, but that one has a very, a very, very low, low CBD component, the topical that they uh, have, right? To, but yeah, but use the oral for topical. So you use the oh, liposome. Oh, oral. Or use the gotcha. tincture, or even use the capsule, break it open and put that onto a skin and area, and rub that in. You'll get the effects within a couple minutes. And I typically, you know, the hemp balm is good, uh, but if you want to get some higher concentrations, then using the, the, the liposomes or the tincture. Now, the tincture is oil, and so that's not going to dry, but the liposomes, it's pretty cool. After about three minutes, it's dry. You can put clothes on, and you don't have to worry about it rubbing off on the clothes. Okay. Have you tried using, I mean, have you had an experience with the vape? Yes, I've got extensive experience with the vape. Oh, really? Yes. Is that, that, um, my problem is I don't smoke, so that's why, you know, I mean, I, I, I carry only a few, um, few quantities of uh, elixinol products, but... Uh, that's better compared to the tincture and uh I wouldn't say it's better. It delivers C B D directly to the brain in ten seconds. Um mm -hmm. well, many people have are able to control their anxiety uh and their pain. I mean I've even used it as an anti cancer approach. It's been effective. Not everybody responds that way. It's really good for respiratory problems like asthma or C O P D or pulmonary fibrosis or pulmonary hypertension. Oh. Wow. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. pul pul I mean, pulmonary hypertension, even for kids? Sure. Well, so, you you know, you have to get past the stigma of smoking, and parents don't want to um, uh, risk their you. children um, <laughs> vaporizing uh -huh. uh, nicotine. I don't want kids to nic to vaporize nicotine either. Uh, but this is such a, a healthy substance that I think it's much more valuable if they're having problems and you're having them on steroids and a bronchodilator right. um, and uh, um, an anti-TNF um, uh, agent. I mean, all that stuff is has got a lot of adverse effects with it. 
CBD doesn't have any adverse effects, that, that, and it right. is healthy, and it doesn't impede the lungs in any way. So it's quite valuable. I've got 40 no, lectures on YouTube. Can I repost that? I my, encourage uh, you to. Sure. A, thank you so much, Dr. Blair. You're so welcome. Nice to talk with you. Uh -huh.